Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and this is sort of a broad spectrum video but uh, it's going to be specific to Microsoft Flight Simulator applications but um, I wanted to show you guys a little tool that I've been working on and it's very simple to do anybody can do it um, and what it is is to launch it's a batch file to launch multiple applications at one time and the reason why I'm doing this is because as flight simmers you know whether it be X-Plane 11 P3D it really doesn't matter um, flight simmers in general, we tend to have a ton of third-party applications that we run at the same time. So we launch Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then you might have Pilot to ATC. You might have the FS Playground. You might have Rex Weather Force. You might um, be a content creator launching, um, you know, um, OBS or something. I mean, the list goes on and on. ATC Chatter, your diff uh, Navigraph. I mean, again, there are so many applications that we use in flight simulation. And sometimes one of the biggest pains in the butt is just getting them all started. I mean, there's just so many. So I figured I would show you guys say something that I use on how to open most of those at one time. Okay, with a simple click. Now, the only exception to this, the one that we're actually not going to add to this file, just to give you guys a heads up right now, is Microsoft Flight Simulator itself. You'll want to launch that the old-fashioned way. And the only reason why is because Microsoft in their... Uh, what I determined to be an obscene obsession with um, trying to control what everyone does because of the installation location, specifically where the EXE is located, um, most batch files and most user permissions won't have access to that directory. So this is just for the third party applications, Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're still going to have to use the EXE um, unless you know something I don't, by all means, let me know down the field below because I want to know. But let's get into today's video and let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to type, and I use Notepad++. I, I highly recommend you guys get this. I'll have a link for it down in the description below. Um, it is a great text editor. It works with tons of different languages, and it just makes it really easy to understand what's going on. So what we're going to do here is where I'm going to go to language. I'm going to go to B, and I'm going to select batch. Okay, and then I'm going to type echo off. And all this is supposed to do is supposed to stop any repeat command lines from popping up on the screen, showing you what it's doing. Okay, um, it's not going to break anything by leaving it on or anything like that. It's not required. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, title what I'm what this particular line is going to be. So in this particular situation, we're going to start out by well, let's just work our way through it. Flight planning, right? So I use SimBrief a lot, so I want it to open SimBrief. So I'm going to do first hyphen hyphen. And what this does is anything that's on this line, um, the batch file is going to ignore. This is how we can create titles. So I'm going to just type SimBrief here. Now for the actual command, we're going to type start chrome.exe. And any of your web browsers are typically installed in the C program files in the default directories. You won't need to actually tell it where it's at. Um, any of our third-party apps, we will. Um, so give me just a second here. And we're going to do start chrome.exe. And now, where do we want Chrome to grow? I'm going to have it go www.simbrief.com and type enter. Now let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to do a file, save as. I'm going to put this up on the desktop. And you can see it's titled in our new one bat. We don't want that. And we're going to do um, MSFS apps. That's what we'll call this. Throw it on the desktop here. You can see it comes up with this icon. This is how you know it's saved correctly, is if you have these cogs. Now, if you are not using Notepad++, okay, let me show you something real quick. If we were just go to open, oops, <laughs> I ran it. At least you know it works. Uh, we want edit, excuse me. It's going to bring you up a standard notepad is the other way you can do this. And what you would want to do instead is go file, save as, and you can see right now it wants to put it as a text document. We don't want to do that. We want to go all files, and then we can save it as a bat. And typically you would have to type it, msfs apps.bat, okay, for the first time. Just make sure you do all files and then put the dot .bat extension at the end of it. Okay, and again, go save. Yep, telling me it already exists. Hit yes, we're good to go there. I'm gonna bring this back up here. I'm actually gonna move it off screen for a second. 
And now I'm gonna go back to edit with Notepad++. Again, it's one of the easiest ways to do this. All right, so now let's move on to the next section. By the way, guys, I'm sorry if I bounce around a little bit. I'm not used to making technical videos like this, so forgive me. Um, so anyway, so we've got SimBrief, and I'll, I'm gonna show you guys how this works. I know I sort of kicked it off the screen pretty quick a minute ago, but if we launch it, SimBrief.com. All right, so now, got SimBrief going. And again, at this point, remember, Microsoft Flight Simulator is already running, right? So what do we want next? So next we want, um, let's do pilot to ATC. That's a big one. Pilot to ATC, right? And you can label these whatever you want. Just remember when you're doing your titles to put those two hash marks, that way it's ignored. And then what I'm gonna do is, this is where it becomes really handy to install all of your applications in one directory. Like I have almost all of my uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator apps in the same location. Some vary, some some are a little bit off, but we're gonna come into Pilot to ATC, and you can see here's the executable. This is always what we're looking for is the executable. So we're gonna go to Properties, and what I want is this directory right here. And you can do this one of two ways. You can either copy it right out of here, or you can come up here and grab it. So we're just gonna come up there and grab it. And here's what you have to do with this. Because it is a third-party application, because it is an application that's not installed in the default directories, um, we have to tell uh, the batch file where it is. So we're going to go to start. We're going to go space. Now we're going to put two quotes side by side, just like that. And then we're going to put a quote again. Now, the quote is only technically required if there's a space, but it works both ways. So I'm telling you guys to make it easy. Just do it exactly as you see here. And then I'm gonna paste our location. Now remember, this is just the root directory. Okay, so this is taking us to this folder, but now we have to tell the batch file to launch this executable. So we're gonna do a backslash, and exactly as we see the executable typed here, we need to make sure it's typed up here. So pilot to ATC underscore 2020 exe. And then end with a quotation. Okay, do control S Sierra for save. All right, and now if we launch our batch file again, there's pilot to ATC launching and SimBrief. And what we can do here too, is if I move this browser off to my other screen and I move pilot to ATC off, hang on a second, we'll let it load. I've had it freeze on me before when I tried dragging it around. Okay, so ATC loaded, and it's over here on my left-hand screen. All right, so I'm gonna leave it over here. I'm gonna close it. Yes, I want to exit pilot ATC. I'm gonna close my browser again, and then if I launch them again, now you guys can't see it, but my browser is on the screen that I moved it to, and pilot to ATC, when it's done loading, it always loads on the screen. I should, I think I can move it over and I'll probably launch on that one. Um, but pilot to ATC is going to launch where it last was. This is one thing I'll give Windows. It does a pretty good job of remembering where things were when you last opened them. Now, it's important to remember in the sake of like SimBrief here, it's remembering where the browser was opened, not when the last time SimBrief was used. So if the last time you used your web browser was on your main monitor, that's where it's going to start. Okay, but SimBrief is over on my right screen. My browser opened up on the left screen. All right, so now let's move on. Let's just get a couple more going here and I'll show you guys how it all works. So I'm gonna close everything down again. And now let's just start walking through some of this. So we've got pilot to ATC. And now let's do, let's see here. What else I got in here? I'm trying to find the ones I use often. Uh, pushback recorder I like, but that one I use only when I'm flying the airliners. Um, Mobile Companion, I love this app, love this app. If you guys don't have this, oh gosh, get it. Huge, huge help. Mobile, especially if you're like me and you get into those lazy moments where you don't feel like setting up all your peripherals. Uh, Mobile Companion. Um, so we're gonna do start again. We're gonna do our double quotes. We're gonna grab this directory. We're gonna start with a quote, end there, put a backslash, 
tell it what the executable file name is. And the other thing you can do here is if you want to make it easy, go rename, just make sure you grab all of it, control C, control V to paste, and in quotations, that one's done. All right, and then let's do a couple more here. Um, FSUIPC7, actually this is one we're gonna put above. Now it does have the ability, by the way, FSUI, <clears throat> excuse me, FSUIPC7 does have the ability to launch with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I have that disabled because I don't always use it. I, I think the only thing I use it for right now is uh, P2A2C. So let's have it load right before Pilot ATC. That would make more sense. So FSUIPC7. And it doesn't hurt to load it when you don't need it. It doesn't hurt at all. Um, and most of the times when I don't load these programs, it's because I'm too lazy to open them all up. I admit it. There, I've said it. Yes, I get too lazy to run a mouse click. You guys can uh, judge me all you want. I accept the judgment. It's fair. And that's just the way life goes sometimes. FSUIPC7.exe. Again, I'm looking at this one right here. Okay, and we're going to end that with a quote. Just to make sure everything stays fluid and safe. We've saved it now. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to do a couple more just to make sure you guys stay with me. And plus, if I'm working on it anyway, might as well show you guys how it all works. Um, let's see, what's another one? I'm trying to find some of the ones that I don't use often enough because I don't feel like dealing with the loading. Uh, let's see here. Air tool I don't use very often anymore. Add-ons, linker I only use on specific locations. There's a lot of these actually I need to clear out. I don't use a lot of this stuff anymore. Um, this FS meter one, I'm going to show you guys in another video. It's actually kind of cool. It just gives you meter data from any particular airport. Kind of comes in handy. Um, Rex, Rex Weather Force, even though I need to update it big time. Um, let's see here, which is the one we're looking for? It should be this one. Just double checking these. Yep. All right, so that's the only EXE. Okay, so again, let's do Rex, however you want to spell it. Weather force. Again, start. Boom. Go again. And we're just going to drop this in here like that. Backslash, because now we need to find the executable. This one I'm going to do a rename on. You know, grab that guy, throw it in there, give it a nice quote, get rid of the colon there that I put the typo, do a save, and now I'll tell you what, let's walk through it all. So I'm going to move this. And you know what? Actually, I'm going to add one more here to the browser. Sky Vector. I've started using this more and more and more. Um, it's actually really helpful. There we go. All right. So let's tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch the simulator. So you guys can see everything work with the sim up and running. So I'll catch you guys in just a second. All right, so the simulator's open. So now I'm gonna run our batch file. It's just icon that we saw before. I'm just gonna double click it. And this is the mobile companion app. So that you always have to minimize. This is Rex Weather Force telling me there's a new update. So you can move that off screen. Pilot to ATC still loading. And it's loaded on my other monitor and on my browser. There's Sky Vector and there's Simbrief. So anyway, guys, play around with it. Let me know what you guys think. I hope this helps. Just an easy way to manage the 2,000 apps that, that we all use. I mean, from Pushback Helper, Pushback Recorder, um, you know, your meter information and recording software, replay software. I mean, you can add anything to these that you use in your daily operations when running a, you know, flight simulator app. That makes it a lot easier than click, 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 click. You know, I, I am always about making things easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you guys think down in the description below in the comments. And uh, I will catch you guys in the next one.